Hey, welcome to Morning Perfect Base, and I hope that you are having a good morning. I'm going to work on my perfect base. I'm going to work on it a little bit each day, and uh, after a few weeks, uh, I'm going to see what happens. So my goal here at Morning Perfect Base is uh, calm, informative news, and some opinions. Today we're going to be talking about cyberbullying, suicide, white supremacists, and uh, my new podcast. Oh, and, and Skull Kickers, actually, instead of the kind of the troll setup I had uh, last time for Skull Kickers. It wasn't a troll, really. I mean, it's just, you know, there were a lot of credits. So I did some SNL shtick. Anyway, my first priority this morning is going to be putting some stuff down into the storage room. God damn it. And nice, easy, laid back news in the mornings. I'm going to go back up to the northwest corner here and I'm going to continue to try to clear it out. There is just a lot of blocks here. Let's see if I can clear this up. Anyway, Bully Hunters. Uh, Bully Hunters was this uh, attempt by a marketing company, I think it's called FCB, to stop bullying by making a group of gamers to find bullies online and like counter bully them. And they did like this live event where, uh, you know, they, they showed like the, their collection of kind of a Justice League of anti-bullying gamers. Finding folks online, finding bullies online, and then counter-bullying them into not being bullies anymore. Uh, that live event, the event itself was live, but the actual gameplay was pre-recorded. And then there were some issues with, um, oh, what is that? You know, where there was like sponsorship issues and then one of the gamers they picked out had like said a homophobic slur like five years ago or something, maybe three years. I don't know. Anyway, lots of people got really bent out of shape about it uh, and the marketing agency decided not to. That's clearly a skeleton I can hear in the background. I don't know if you can hear it. Um, people are outraged about it. I don't know. Where I differ is in the don't bully bullies response. Uh, and, and the issues with one part in the, the homophobic slur stuff, like um, certainly there's potential for abuse. And uh, I also think that maybe some people do say homophobic things and they can grow as people. I think when someone says, hey, that's who I am, that's doesn't mean anything and they get defensive about it, I think that's, you know, shitty. Uh, about calling things gay or whatever or or you know calling people faggots that's all shitty but you know you have to accept that some people move past it now is uh, what's her name with the gamer in question I don't know anything about her uh, and certainly when she's when she's in a lot of public hot water she's gonna say hey that was a long time ago uh, you know if you're that worried about it you can read up on it but it's I think the core issue here is if the system allows abuse we should work to fix it, not exploit the same flaws as shitty people. That's it's kind of been the rallying cry from people. The same people who never really want to do anything because it might be the wrong thing. They never actually want to solve a problem. Because solving a problem means doing something. And doing something means you might fuck something up. And um, you can do both. You can work within the system to address systemic flaws. Um... And you can also have your note cards just fly out from under you with this new conversational angle you've been taking. Uh, and you can also take definitive steps. You can also exploit those systems until they're fixed and do it publicly, you know? Um, I just think it's weird how there are some people, like these moralizing police, who have more problems with people who are trying to fight bullies in, in good faith, in good faith, than they do with the actual bullies themselves, you know? Say, oh, bullying's bad. Oh, you can't do anything about it. What if you mess it up even worse? And they can instantly nitpick any kind of possible thing that might go wrong with it. I don't know. I remember this happening with Phoenix Jones a couple years ago. Um, where, you know, even before Phoenix Jones messed things up, people were like, blah, 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 blah. You have kids. How dare you make the world a better place when you have kids? How dare you try to do that? It's, it's insane. Know, I'm just saying, if the system is going to allow people to bully, uh, you know, social media platforms are going to let people bully, then um, get together with friends. Find people who bully. And then, you know, 
make them unhappy about having bullied. Um, the problem with vigilante justice is always the fact that innocent people inevitably get caught up in it. But you know, them's, uh, them's your odds to weigh. So, uh, and you know, there's no, there's no commercial incentive for, you know, Twitch or for Twitter or for YouTube or anyone else to fix these problems. There's no economic incentive for them to stop anonymous accounts and harassers and things like that. They don't want to do that. They need the numbers to make themselves look legitimate and to put into dockets for advertisers. So, you know, until they get serious about that kind of stuff, um, until, you know, gaming systems and like Xbox Live start actually taking hard lines on repetitive, uh, I'm sorry, consistent harassers and people who make toxic environments in their, their networks. Um, you know, do what you got to do. Something like Bully Hunter sounds great. Next story is uh, David S. Buckle. He was an attorney, fought for gay rights. Um, he was a, he was a strategist behind some same-sex marriage legislation efforts in New Jersey and Iowa. I think he famously sued a uh, Nebraska sheriff. Uh, not sued, but he was he was the lead attorney on the case where a Nebraska sheriff failed to protect Brandon Tina, a transgender man, killed. You remember it from um, from Boys Don't Cry is basically that case um so anyway he uh he immolated himself in a park in brooklyn last week which is uh pretty harsh apparently you know, he'd been working uh for gay rights for a while he turned to environmental causes and uh, in his suicide note he mentions the enormity of the environmental problems our planet faces as being uh his his um, reason for doing that and he literally immolated himself he set himself on fire he felt so strongly about this uh, and I've seen people the same kind of moralizing police who are angrier that someone would set themselves on fire over the challenges facing our planet than they actually are you know the state of the planet um, I think these people see folks trying to make the world a better place and they feel instantly uh not jealous i guess shamed to action and desperate to to store that shame away they've they've called this guy mentally ill because he sacrificed his life in the hopes of getting people to care more about the environment um you know not how i would have played it but i i understand his motivations i, I don't need to denigrate the guy i will denigrate people that shit on him quickly and readily uh, ignorantly so um, I think that instead of seeking to distance ourselves from his actions we should probably uh, ask ourselves seriously if this knowledgeable knowledgeable man's actions are warranted and if if we should do something more um, to really to really question ourselves on that I think that's a reasonable response to this kind of thing. It's, I don't have any particularly um, religious or highly held beliefs regarding people who are dead. They're dead, they don't care. But uh, if someone would die, like die forever die, for a reason, you know, give that some thought. Figure out what's up with that. I don't know, the, the world is full of problems and there are a few easy answers. Um, I've just noticed the theme this week about folks who uh, are better at finding problems and afraid of actually looking for answers. But I guess after saying all that shit, I need to um, maybe ask myself, oh geez, I did not set myself up for this. If there's more I can be doing for the environment. Yes, awesome, I'm glad I got that on tape. I'm pretty sure I started recording this. All right, so let's quit cutting this end because that was pretty stupid. Uh, oh yeah, there's a guy at uh, Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Some dumb shit blew himself up. He uh, he had so many explosives in his apartment that the fire department's like, nope, just burn it down. And they did a controlled demolition of his apartment building. Didn't even let people into their apartments. Just kind of blew it up where it stood. Apparently he'd, uh, woo. He'd 
he was working on a pressure explosive and it exploded so you know half credit uh, the ceiling had collapsed in on him pinning him over the stove uh, and the, the first responders found tons of explosives, a barrel of acetone. There was some sensationalistic language in the original article, which I won't bother sharing. But uh, the real laugh line is the dude had white supremacist literature in his apartment, which isn't surprising. Um, I don't know if there are any recreational bomb makers here. The police, though, they were like, uh, I don't know, this bomb maker from White Sylvania might have been doing research. I mean... Admittedly, that's possible, but it's probably white supremacy, and, you know, fuck that guy. Uh, like, he's, he's got white supremacist literature, and he's making bombs. That dude just has the worst draw on hobbies, right? Just, it's like, look, I'm not making bombs to kill dark people, but uh, I'm just really curious about white supremacy, and I really like, you know, chemistry, applied chemistry. Super love applied chemistry. I just... It's, it's just insane that a police officer could say that with this... Like, I realize, okay, you're there's a case ongoing and you don't want to be like, dude is a white supremacist because you don't want to get your, um, you know, your people in trouble. You don't want to jump to conclusions as a responsible civil servant. But uh, I, don't, I don't like playing the, if this had been different game, it would have been different right because that's a stupid game oh if this had been whatever it would have been better. like well it wasn't that so we don't really know but i do strongly feel like that reluctance to ascribe radical motivations to this guy may not have been felt uh, if there were some different issues on this about his case i just feel strongly like it would have been treated differently so, um, I don't know, I'd, I'd rather just stick to facts and just say, hey, um, this guy's probably white supremacist. You know, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd lay odds. So, um, oh, I got a new project. Uh, it's a pa un Star Trek. It is an Orville podcast. Uh, I'm doing it with a longtime listener of the, the Beige and the Bold that I do with Derek. Um, you know, we talked about it, you know, we have, we have some correspondence about Star Trek and about the Orville, the, the Star Trek-like show from Fox. Yeah. Um, and so we decided to do a podcast with it. He's kind of new to the scene and we're, we're actually doing a, like not a watch along. So it's been, it's been educational. It's been different. Oh wow. So many things. Uh, I don't know where or how or when I'm going to be putting it up. I mean, it'll probably go on the website. I may look into an alternative hosting service just to look into that and see what happens there. Because we're only going to make like 13 episodes, so it may not be a big deal. So um, it still requires so much editing. Though. Hopefully it'll be about 20 minutes, just freeform talking about the Orville and Star Trek. And mostly the Orville, hopefully. Our first episode did not um, encourage a lot that we're going to be able to stay on that topic. But uh, the Beige and the Bold thing going on to YouTube is something I've been meaning to get on with, and I just haven't. Uh, where I just don't know about the visuals. I don't know if I want to do episode stills or modified episode stills or if I want to commission art or do art myself, which I'm not capable of. It's going to be pretty terrible art. Um, probably quicker and easier than... Da, 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 da. Probably quicker and easier than, than commissioning art or in modding images. But um, anyway, I also think about doing a dedicated season three solo session because there's just an itch that the beige and the bold is not scratching right now. I, I don't know what to do about that. Oh, finally, as you know, I'm a cheap bastard. I buy my comics from Discount Bin. This is Disco Comics. This is Skull Kickers 24. I cheaped out uh, last week with the SNL credits. Uh, so I, I buy Discount Comics based on a few criteria. And, uh, the cover's got to be interesting. Uh, I got to know the creative team. Or there's just a good run of books, uh, which sort of draws above the line. Um, so, so, the Skull Carriage 24 cover was based on the before Watchmen cover, except it's a big mug of ale instead of the perfume bottle. Uh, so, I thought, eh, maybe they're shitting on before Watchmen, which I can totally get behind. 
having never read before Watchmen, but having liked and respected Watchmen. Um, because, you know, before Watchmen was a blatant... Anyway, so the thing with Skull Kickers, like the cool thing with Skull Kickers is a series of vignettes. Uh, the stories are good, and that's even considering the fact I have no idea who these people are. They're all prequel stories for the main characters of the series, I assume, and think of villain. Uh, there's a funny story of an elven, of an assassin's elven training, an elves assassin training, a uh, dwarf's quest for an adventuring partner, an incomprehensible... Incom bit by Shub Niggeroth from Marvel vs. Capcom, I think. Uh, and kind of a boring but mildly titillating tale about a fantasy setting cowboy and a fantasy setting bobcat. The, the cowboy does, does not fuck the bobcat. It's just, it's different. Because he's like, he's like he's attractive male nudity? I don't know. But not like, eh, it's just sort of there. Um, not unwelcome. Not, not, I mean, it's necessary to the story because it's like, He's, in, he's brought low by this bobcat, and that involves humiliation often. Um, anyway, not, not sex humiliation, just regular. So that's all we have for today. Uh, you know, I think I got a little bit done here. Maybe less than I, I wanted to. Wow, it was just a big block of land. But uh, until I get a good sign-off.